Hi there, it's Amy from Cakes With Aces. Now I have been away for a little while. December was so busy in my shop and it's just me running Cakes With Aces. So basically I didn't really have time to do anything apart from send out orders. And then I took a bit of time off over the holidays, basically to recover but I'm not complaining. Thank you to everyone who placed an order in my shop. I definitely wouldn't still be here doing this if it wasn't for you and I really do appreciate it, so thank you. So now it's 2022, I thought a good way to start off the year would be with some Japan news. Now I've made a few videos with what's new in Tokyo because you hear so much sad news about things that have closed down, but isn't it better to focus on all the new things that are opening up and all the things we can look forward to visiting one day. If you want to see the other videos, they're both on my channel and there's new Japan videos on my channel every other Thursday if you want to subscribe. You can get all my designs and my Japan travel guidebook from cakeswithfaces.co.uk with worldwide shipping. Now 2022 is of course the year of the tiger, so I wondered if there might be some special celebrations at this tiger temple. I think this temple is just amazing. It's definitely off the beaten path, but you can get there from Osaka and Nara. It's called Shigisan Chogosonshiji Temple. Shigisan Chogosonshiji Temple. I haven't been there, but I found some fantastic blog posts about it. I linked them on Twitter, and I just can't believe all the little tiger details and theming. I just never expected to find a temple that has so much tiger stuff. There's this giant tiger sculpture. I love how it's not just a big tiger, it's a big tiger with a nodding head. And how cute are these little guys? There's even a tiger post box, fantastic. Now, I don't know what they're doing for the Year of the Tiger, but they do have a big tiger festival at the end of February, so I'm sure it'll be extra special this year. Next is some exciting Harajuku news. There's a new shop on Takeshita Street. It's called Sugar High Happy Class, and it's run by super colourful Haruka Kurebayashi, who is definitely a Harajuku icon. It sells handmade goods, cute socks from Gachapon machines and lots of colourful beads. And there's a space in the shop where you can make your own bead bracelets and necklaces. Now several of my favourite shops in Harajuku have closed down so it's really good to see something opening up, something fresh and new. But not only that, it's great to see that it is run by someone who is 100% Harajuku. When I was there, I overheard an American man talking to some reporters once about how he'd bought up like five shops in the area and he was going to open up his chain stores. So it's really good to see that right, instead of some awful gentrification, this is a new shop from someone who really is part of authentic Harajuku culture. And Haruka Kurebayashi really is the real deal. I was lucky enough to meet her when she came to London once and she is so sweet. She is such a lovely person. She is 100% kawaii. She's just as lovely as you'd imagine. I did a mini interview with her, half in Japanese, half in English. The video's on my channel. Next, in autumn 2022, some sections of the Studio Ghibli theme park will be opening. Now, I know it's pronounced Ghibli, but I can't say that without thinking about giblets, so I'm going to stick with Ghibli. The parts that are opening are the Hill of Youth, Ghibli or Ghibli's large warehouse, which importantly is where the cat bus will be, and the Dondoko Forest. And the rest is going to open in autumn 2023. That's Mononoke's village and the Valley of Witches. It looks very green and natural with buildings from the films and more like a themed park than a theme park with roller coasters. Although there will be some small rides and there's going to be a cinema. So maybe they'll have some special films like Studio Ghibli in Tokyo. It's in Nagakute near Nagoya, which is a city that isn't always on foreign tourists' itineraries. So this gives us all a good reason to visit. So that's opening in autumn 2022. There hasn't been any news yet on when Japan will be reopening for foreign tourists, but I did a quick opinion poll on Twitter just to see what you guys thought, just for fun. And the most popular option was autumn 2022. So who knows, maybe it'll all work out. And if we can go to Japan in autumn 2022, we'll also be there just in time for the opening of the new Shinkansen line in Kyushu, which goes to Nagasaki. 
just before Christmas, there was some news on this. They revealed the new trains that will be running on the line. They look very stylish. It's called the Komome, which means seagull. I can't help but see a face on the front of this. It looks kind of like some sort of reptile or salamander. So when the new line's running, it will make it much quicker to get to Nagasaki. And I definitely want to go back to Kyushu. So maybe it'll all work out in autumn 2022. Next, they've announced plans to redevelop Meiji Park and Yoyogi Park in Tokyo. Now, at first, you might think Meiji Park is Meiji Jingu, which is in Harajuku, right next to Yoyogi Park, but that's actually Meiji Jingu Shrine. Even though it has loads of grounds that you can walk through, feels a bit like a park in some places, that's not a park, it's a shrine. Meiji Park is over near Shinjuku Park with the Japan National Stadium, and that's the one that's being redeveloped. They're not touching Meiji Jingu. I think we can all agree that that one is perfect just the way it is. I also love Yoyogi Park just as it is. There's always so much going on there. It doesn't seem like it needs a redevelopment. But from what I can work out, they're not changing the park as it is. They're actually extending it onto a new patch of land. So if you know the big Tory gate that everyone takes a photo with at the entrance to Meiji Jingu, that's here. And the big paved circle where the rockabillies hang out and the gates to Yoyogi Park is here. And the new part of the park is going here. There's gonna be a skate park, sports facilities, places to eat and lots of greenery. Next is something that's finished now, but I just had to show you. It's a giant rubber duck in Osaka. This was on the river as part of their winter illuminations. When I put it on Twitter, someone said they'd seen it in their country as well, so it seems it's a very well-travelled rubber duck. I would love to see it. Next, we've got an update for Japan travel news. Previously, there were a couple of forms that you had to fill in when you were on the plane and then hand in at customs when you arrive in Japan. And now they've updated them to digital forms that you fill in online instead. It's got a very exciting name, Visit Japan Web, very snappy. It's supposed to make things quicker and less fuss when you arrive at customs in Japan because you can fill everything in before you go. Next is a new luxury train. Now, you know we all love Japanese trains here. And if you want to experience a luxury train ride in Japan, but you don't have the budget for the 300,000 yen trip on the Seven Stars Kyushu, this might be an option for you. Tickets are only 2,000 yen, but it is much shorter. It's only an 80 minute train ride, but it's still a way to have a luxury experience. It runs between Osaka, Nara and Kyoto. It looks very fancy with deluxe furnishings, very stylish. It's called the Aoniyoshi from Kintetsu Railways and it starts running in April 2022. Next, in Osaka, if you know the Shinsekai area, it's a really hustling, bustling area where that famous pufferfish lantern used to be. If you know that area, you might recognize the 210 Kaku Tower. It's a famous landmark in the area. Well, this year they're installing a slide on it. Unfortunately, it doesn't go right from the top of the tower. It starts at this floor and then spirals down from a height of 60 meters, which is still higher than most slides. As an added bonus, it's not just a slide for fun. In case of an earthquake, it's also an emergency exit. It's gonna be opening at the end of April 2022 in time for Golden Week. Next, a new Disney store is opening in Tokyo in Shinjuku, and it's gonna be the largest Disney store in the whole of Japan. I was surprised the largest store isn't at Tokyo Disney, but I guess they already have a lot of shops dotted around, and then this is gonna be the largest single store. It has three floors. One floor has merch from Disney parks all around the world. And another one has a counter where you can customize Disney clothes and bags. Now this new store might be the largest, but I think the one in Shibuya is still the most fun with an outside like a big castle. Next, in one of my previous Tokyo News videos, we had a new observation deck where you can see a view of Mount Fuji from a roller coaster with this skywalk where you walk along meters in the air without any handrails while somehow still appreciating the magnificent view of Mount Fuji. Well, now there's another new attraction in the area where you can see a view of Mount Fuji from a swing. It's at the edge of Kawaguchiko, which is the largest of the lakes in the area. 
You go up a ropeway to an observation deck which has a great view of Mount Fuji, if it's not cloudy of course, and there's now a big swing so you can enjoy the view while you're on a swing, which I'm sure makes it all the more enjoyable. Next, the new world's largest anime store is going to be opening in spring 2023. And, shock news, it's not in Akihabara. It's actually Animate in Ikebukuro. Animate is a shop that sells all kinds of anime merch. They've got branches all around Japan and their flagship store is already in Ikebukuro. It has nine floors already, but they're all being renovated and it's being extended to take over the healthcare centre next door to make it the world's largest anime store. In this preview, it looks absolutely huge. Next, in Himeji, an old city bus is being converted into a sauna bus. It actually has a sauna on board. They call it the Sab Bus. Sauna, bus, Sab Bus, Sab Bus. I'm not sure that really works. It's kind of nice they've kept some features from the original bus, like the hanging rings that you hold onto when you're going along, and they've kept the buttons you press to request a stop. But now, when you press the buttons, they spray water for steam in the sauna. Sadly, it is just for private hire, so it won't be driving around the city with people continuously getting on and off. Or maybe that's a good thing. If you like the sauna part, but not the bus part, how about this? In 2020, a traditional Sento bathhouse in Tokyo was renovated and updated, so it now has the baths, as well as a DJ and a bar with craft beers, so you can enjoy the hot water in the baths while you're having a beer and enjoying some music. If that sounds like a good time to you, it's only about 500 yen to get in and they allow people with tattoos. The place is called Koganeyu. And finally, before anyone outside Japan has even had a chance to go to Super Nintendo World, there's another reason to visit Universal Studios Japan. They're building a Pokemon section. They haven't announced many details about it yet. All we know is Pikachu is going to be joining the parade at Universal in spring 2022. And we know Pikachu has good experience of parades from the Pikachu outbreak in Yokohama. So hopefully this will be just as cute. And then the first attraction is going to be opening by the end of 2022. So there's lots to look forward to in Japan. And even if we can't go till the end of the year or even after that, the longer we wait, the more new things are going to be open. There's the Studio Ghibli theme park, the largest anime store in the world, that new luxury train, maybe next winter that giant rubber duck will return. Who knows? Tell me in the comments what you're most looking forward to. And I'll see you not next week, but the week after on Thursday. Bye bye.